No, it was like this huge shadow in the sky, only it was alive and it was coming from me. In today's review, we're going to be having a look at the final figure from the McFarlane Toys Stranger Things Series 2. This is Will. Will's a bit smaller than the rest of the group, so we're gonna go ahead and measure him off and start stopping, stopping the tape measure right to the very top. This figure is 5.9 inches in height. That in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that for you right now. 15 centimeters is how tall Will is. To also show you how tall Will is compared to some of the rest of the group, there he is next to Lucas. I'm putting these guys without their display stands, probably something I'm gonna be regretting in a second. And let's bring in Dustin. There he is right there. These guys, some of them work a little bit better with display stands, like Dustin, for example, I find a bit top heavy. Not making any comments about his weight, but he is a little, <laughs> he's a little top heavy. And uh, we'll go ahead and fix his hand. There's the one that we just recently looked at. There's Mike. And why not? Here's Eleven. No, I'm not. I'm not going to put that disgusting other Eleven figure. She has no place anywhere in future reviews. Maybe other than just some scale comparisons. Uh, but there's all the kid characters from Stranger Things, and then of course there is Hopper. The only one I don't have currently at the moment is the Demogorgon. I'm just not sure where I put that. But there's all the characters that we've looked at so far. Slick, expensive editing later. Uh, Will does come included with the display stand. <laughs> I slay me. Comes with the same display stand that would come included with all the other figures. See, there's an example right there. Yeah, same, same stand. Same as this one here. They're all the same display stands. Well, that's not 100% true. You know enough from previous reviews to also know that they came with the more smokier, sort of clouded clear plastic stands, but they all say Stranger Things on the top. Um, I have a couple of these as well that I have pulled from. I think Lucas and Dustin had this where I've got some sticky tape left over on the back there when I pulled the tape off. They stick them, you see. Let me explain. They run a strip of tape along the back and they just attach it to the back of the clamshell. When you take the tape off, these ones haven't been so much the issue, but some of the ones from the first series just left all this glue crap all over the back that really is just disappointing. It makes me so sad and yet I feel like I do have to push on with life even though the display stands in those cases did let me down immeasurably. Let's have a look at the knapsack, the backpack that came included with Will. Whether you call it a knapsack or whether you call it a backpack is entirely your preference. I grew up with knapsacks, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it a knapsack. This one attaches a little bit differently. Well, actually, you know what? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is uh, Mike's. This was Mike's backpack, knapsack, whatever you want to call it. Pack over your shoulder pack. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Um, this, see, as you can see, it attaches this way. I found this just wasn't enough to kind of grab onto, and sure enough, I could get it now, and eventually I was able to get it in the review. These are how they vary from one another. Will's is constructed a little bit different. Instead of actually pegging it on this way, you have actually a much longer peg that you feed through the hole and just pops in in place. For something that would almost seem like it's got more plastic to contend with, I actually find it a lot easier to get that peg into the hole than I, I find with this one. It's just the, I, just the nature of the way it is. If this peg was turned this way, so let me just show you what I'm talking about here. If that peg was looking like this, it would actually be a lot easier to peg into place. I just hope that all the figures would have just used that same easy to peg in 
I know we're spending a whole lot of time doing this, talking about this, than this one right here, if that makes any sense. As a result, it can be put over Will a lot easier, and I'll show you that in a second. He does also come with the same walkie-talkie as all the other gang. Uh, here's here's uh, Mike's, just to show you. Same exact walkie-talkie, except for maybe for the fact that Will's antenna is slightly warped. We'll just go ahead and fix that. But yeah, exactly the same. There's nothing different between them. There's the back. No, pretty much the same, When you admit? I would admit. Uh, the walkie-talkie does peg into these this extra hand that comes included. In fact, all the figures that have had this, avoiding to not say the name yet again, because I'm sure there's probably a drinking game already for that, all of them have had to use an extra hand that have all had pegs in them. Now, if you take Will, you can just unpeg the hand. Once again, very small, worrisome little pegs that you got to worry about contending with. Pop the hand in place, and uh, now Will's got the functionality of talking through the walkie-talkie. Now, if he's lost in the upside down, and that might be a little bit trickier for him to get a hold of anybody, maybe a little string of lights might actually help. So he comes with those as the accessories. Now you can kind of leave this in his hand. It does look a little awkward. It looks like he should have an, it kind of looks like an unpainted joy buzzer. So for the rest of this review, go back to common decency. Let's peg the hand in place that does not have a big bulbous peg sticking out of it. Now Will could in theory have come with more accessories than all the ones I've just stated. I would basically just be imagining all these extra accessories because he only really comes with the ones that I've just talked about. I wish it could have come with some other things, but I really don't know what else off the top of my head I could possibly think of. So we will move on. Talking a little bit about his face. Okay. Now this is the regular retail release. This is not the upside down version of Will, although looking at the face sculpt, I would almost even bet that Will has still not left the upside down. Something seems so off on his face. It feels, I feel, I feel inside that we've taken some steps back. If we look at how good actually, for example, Mike's head sculpt was, Okay, excluding for the fact he's got a very sad, sad face. But the paint at least looks a little bit more natural. There's something almost ghastly and ghostly about Will's face that I feel like the paint is just a little too pale. It's also got this chalkiness to it that's almost hard to describe unless you're physically looking at it. Of course, you're also running into a lot of problems, at least I am, where he's got all these little blemishes all over his face. I don't know if some of that has come over from the blue collar that they painted, or it just looks like it's almost been scratched off. I can assure you, no giant tiger has mangled little tiny Will here. This is it, this is exactly the way he came out of packaging. Yeah, there's something almost a little empty about looking at Will's face here. I wish the paint just could have been a little bit cleaner. The rest, of the, like the sculpt isn't terrible. The sculpt's pretty good, actually. It's just almost the paint that almost disappoints the figure. By no means, no means, am I saying that it's on par with, say, the initial 11, which is just terrible. Pardon me. You can see it at the very least, there's some depth to Will's eyes, the black, the contrast of the skin tone to his hair. I mean, she's so, like, monochromed. I don't know. There's just an uninteresting appeal to the initial 11. I know, we've beaten that one to death. Head sculpt, my takeaway is good. I like the head sculpt, but I feel like the paint just sort of lets it down. We're taking sort of a few steps back on this one. It's actually a very similar to, let me just grab them here. I've got all these figures here just on the side. Kind of even a similar sort of sponging, almost distorted nature that Dustin has. Okay, Dustin's might actually be even worse. Yeah, I wish the paint could have been just a little bit better on Will because I do like the head sculpt. I thought it might have actually been a little bit too big of a head sculpt, in fact, looking like something he almost had, like an alien head. But I think the more I look at it, he's a very small character in the show, and a slightly slightly larger head as a result of it, that I think it works and it fits accurately to his proportions. I think it's really just ultimately, if I could, if I could pinpoint 
if I could put a virtual pin somewhere on the map where we got lost on this figure, it's more so just the paint than it is really the sculpt. The rest of his body actually is decent. He's got his little plaid. Now you can't really pry this apart. It's glued to the top here. Ugh. I mean, you could pull away the bottom of the vest, this vest jacket. You can see they've done a great job of giving him this, uh, the plaid shirt there, a mixture of light blues, dark blues, and a little bit of red. And of course, over top of that, he's got his life preserver jacket, something that Marty McFly would be quite, quite happy with. Rolled up sleeves, and he's got the undershirt underneath there with the longer sleeves sticking out from there. That almost looks like a Timex watch. That almost even looks like the watch I had growing up. He's got that on his wrist. No real issues where I'm looking at the figure and I'm thinking that he looks mangled. He looks really splotchy. It's really just the face that find, I find myself sort of still roaming around as if I'm just a pack of hyenas circling around the prey. Here, I'm just generally uninterested in looking at any real nitpicks. Overall, the figure looks good. It's just that, it's just the paint. Broken record, I know, broken record. Uh, as we move further down the figure, nice detail, nice sculpted, de sculpted detail there in the legs. Sort of lightly, lightly textured. It doesn't have to be overly crazy. After all, we're talking about jeans. We're not talking Picasso here. Um, the paint is minimal. It's a lighter shade of blue denim. And it looks like they've almost even added a lighter, lighter shade over top of that, at least on the wrinkled areas. Yes, there is still the obnoxious looking ratcheted joints there on the back. There's not, not much we can really do about that. And once again, very small shoes, but he's a small character. So we can dismiss for the fact that he's also got really tiny looking feet. And once again, you can see that they've moved the peg hole further up, guaranteeing that the figure's not gonna have the same problem that 11 had. When you put it at the back, by the back of the heel, you're putting a lot of weight on a figure that if she's loose, 11 was, for example, in the ankles, then that means the figure's not gonna have an easy time at all standing. When you have the peg hole slightly further up, you're redistributing where that weight's gonna sit, and it allows the figure to stand a little bit better. It's figure science. Paint's nice on the shoes, very well done here. Just, I say well done, I mean, it's really just two colors, two tones, almost a very dark borderline black blue. And then you've got the white there on the stripes and the white on the laces. On the undersoles, you've got white, lots of white happening here. Very clean, I mean, could it be dirty? Sure, but I mean, you know, we can't, we can't be overly critical of the fact that he doesn't have any dirt on the undersides of his, of his shoes, because after all, he's really gonna be coming with a display stand. I'm just gonna display him with, with that anyways. Okay, all right. Let's talk about his articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges slightly, slightly up. It kind of stops because he's got a bigger quaff of hair there that he's gotta, yeah, the head only goes to about that high. Goes down, side, side, and around. Uh, the shoulders hinge out. They also rotate all the way around. He has a bend at the elbow, a rotation in the forearm, and a rotation in the hand, like that. It has a waist swivel, although it's just really stiff on this figure. Legs split. There's the inner workings of how everything kind of comes together with the figure's legs. You can see how it's basically just a pin system. The legs are clamped pretty much onto a bar, and then the pin runs through each one of those. Or it's even not even, it's not even really just a pin. It's probably just been kind of forced over and clamped onto the pins on either side of the middle part here. Spending a lot of time on that, I know. Hinge on the knee, the legs rotate back and forth. Uh, the feet hinge up and down, and slight, slight ankle pivot back and forth. Now, if anybody is a stickler for the cost of figures, um, let me just get them to stand properly here. Will, for example, would be the same price point as, say, the likes of Hopper perfectly fine with that because after all they are part of the same wave well not the same wave series two here's a series two for example figure you have to it kind of goes with the territory when you're buying these figures they never adjust the cost of these depending on how much plastic that they use 
Hopper obviously uses a lot more plastic to be made than say the likes of smaller Will, but you'll ultimately pay the same price you will from Will to say the likes of Hopper, and that's okay. I don't expect adjusted price points depending on the scale of the figures. It's sort of sad in a way, really. And let me just have, let me just add on to that so you know what exactly I'm talking about. It's kind of sad that I looked at Mike, and I think I was going to go and end on a high note. There's Mike right there. I think Mike is a better looking figure, even though his facial expression just seems sort of somber. Something's off on uh, Will's face, and it's really just the paint that's doing it. I think if they had somehow given him closer face paint to this one, though I will say Will is a paler complexion character in the show, of course he's battling his own problems in series two, um, it still is a little too pale for my liking. He's a little too chalky. And while he doesn't have some of the problems that we looked at when we had a look at Dustin, he's still not one of the better figures from this wave. I think the best figure from the series two still has to be given to Punk 11. It's great that we were able to finally get ourselves Will and Stranger Things series two, at least from the gang standpoint, is complete. I hope this is certainly not the last venture out into the realm of Stranger Things and McFarlane Toys will entertain the idea of a Series 3. Collectively, looking at all the figures, kind of giving my overall assessment, even though we really haven't looked at the upside down exclusive version of Will, which at the time of shooting this video, still haven't been able to locate. But my assessment of the figure lineup so far has been more promisingly high than it has been low. Yes, the figure line has had lows, some of the figures have disappointed me, not so much just in their sculpts, but also in their paints. Eleven by far, the first release of Eleven, was the worst of the bunch, and she also happened to be the first figure that I had a look at. Uh, Dustin had problems with his paint application, sort of looking like he was sponged painted versus something like an airbrushing. Will sort of falls in the middle of that, kind of like he does in the series. He's not quite in the real world. He's not quite in the upside down. He's sort of in the middle. What we're looking at is a decent enough looking figure, proportionally scaled. He is a smaller character after all. Paint on his costume, his clothing, is, real, is rather good, as well as the head sculpt. But still, I can't help but feel like it's the paint that lets the figure down. He's pale, I get that, but he comes across a little too chalky for my liking. He's got a few extra little markings, a QC issue more so than anything else on the sides of his face. He sort of just seems like he's a ghost than anything else, part alien and less human. I know that's awfully critical, but at the end of the day, I mean, you want these figures to be, you know, delivering what you want them to be getting. And I think a Will figure, overall, I'm happy with it, but he just, his paint is really what lets him down in the face sculpt. If you've managed to pick up this figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section. Am I being too hard? Am I being too critical? Should I just be appreciative for the fact that we finally got ourselves a will and we can now complete the entire gang? Or do you feel like his, fa his face paint is a little too pale, a little too chalky? Always like reading your comments down below, guys. Uh, in the meantime, I guess this kind of wraps up our Stranger Things look at figures. Like I said, I am still going to be on the search as what the gang was in the search of Will in season one. I'm still going to be on the search for the upside down exclusive version of Will. If I do manage to find him, rest assured that we'll do a review of him on this channel. So it's something that you guys can stay tuned for if I can find him, that is. If you haven't had a chance yet to also hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? A trip to the upside down? You don't want to be down there. That's a bad. You can ask pale faced Will how enjoyable the upside down was. Uh, if you haven't hit a chance, had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so, because certainly more videos will be coming your way. And hey, while you're at it, if you think along the ways, with the amount of content that this guy churns out, that you feel like you may have missed something along the way. I know a lot of viewers have said to me that they don't always see all of my videos. What's the deal? I know, I ask myself that same very question. So if you are asking, what's the deal? I'm not seeing as many videos from you as you usually put out there. I still am putting out the same amount of content. So why not swing on over to the homepage, check out the videos that I've posted over there and see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. That's a 100% guarantee that if there was a review that I had posted, say last week, and you may have missed out on, you would be able to find it that way. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. 
and I'll see you next time.